In our previous video that I did live, we got this far with the painting and I'll briefly explain what I did. I put a, a wash of random colours in areas that I felt were relevant uh, in a very washy and watery kind of a way and obviously I put a film of water across that to make it so it blended out once that had dried I started to define certain parts of the building now the light is it in that direction so this is going to be dark and this area is going to be light we've got some background either buildings or something there that will uh, will build up a little bit and what we need to do is continue to be building up detail with tonal values and filling in some of the other detailed bits as we progress forward towards the end of the painting but what I am going to see if I can do is get up, get rid of uh, this line here don't look very nice there is one down here as well they're called cauliflowers and uh, they happen sometimes but we can get rid of them so let's see what we can do about getting rid of them uh, another thing you can actually do is uh, put another layer of um, paint over it and that sometimes gets rid of it I'm going to use a very not not extremely damp but enough to be able to use that to blend and hopefully it should just fuzz away and there you go that's that issue mostly dealt with bring it down there so it doesn't look as though it's got an hard edge or anything and do a similar thing with this but strangely enough I quite like this in that area so I'm not going to be as harsh on it I'm going to blend it but I'm, I am going to let it show a little bit this area will also have a bit of dark in it so making sure so that's that's that done what I want to move on here uh, is, is this background section. I'm going to put some detail in, in there and kind of show you that there are buildings or, or something in the background there. But you don't want to overwork that area because it is a almost silhouetted kind of thing. I'm going to put up my reference image. So it helps me to see what what that is. So I'm getting some pale grey blue by mixing a, a, a red and a, a a cool red and a a cool blue. So we've got like a a grey kind of feel, and I might just put a tiny little bit of red in that because I, wa I want to maintain a little bit of that purpliness that'll be right that'll be and you don't have to be overly technical with this it's, it's like give it the essence of a, a building as though you seem you seeing bits of it and then again you're not seeing bits of it and as you get far away it becomes even more abstract to the point where you can barely see it because the, the, the actual it, it's sweeping round from a, a close point here 
and it's going to go right out into the distance so these these particular details here are almost non-existent and when you get to here at this stage you might actually start being able to pick out specific points and go oh that's that oh that's this and that's how you give the illusion of things being receding into the background so we've got that done to a reasonable extent I think that's as much as I'm gonna I may come back to this a little bit later and soften up some of these lines but apart from that that's as much as I want to do really with that so uh, continuing on in a theme we're gonna keep putting grey areas into our painting and always remember that the lights hitting that coming that way so anything that's on that side that plane uh, will be a considerable amount darker although that will make anything that is light on that plane uh, pop out an awful lot more than what it would do. I'm saying that I don't want to lose all this nice colour that I've put in as well. So from a an aesthetic viewpoint, I, I want to keep some of this yellow and some of the uh, nice uh, bleeded colours uh, in it. So it, and. That's the trick of the uh, of the doing of the uh, actual artwork. And uh, we'll come down here. And as we get closer, obviously, these vertical lines are going to get bigger, but farther apart from one another. They almost blend into each other when you get when you get to a certain distance the the almost one in the same thing now that that area there because we're talking about this being the water that will have a an area like that and we'll develop that a little bit later on when we come round to it so we've got a boat here remembering the light is coming this way so the shaded area will be let's get some paint on it that bit there it, it's, it, it's uncertain as to whether you get an awful lot of light here because you've got that which would uh, cast a shadow down onto any part of this so a lot of that would be fairly dark anyway and uh, that will bring a shadow out and then the inside of the boat there will be will be dark slightly. And I don't know if it's some sort of landing area this or or what. I think I'm I'm going to do it as as some sort of landing area. But that's.
some sort of platform where they, they must come down uh, off of the dock, climb down some ladders and there's like a thing like that. Right, so keep developing that. Adding various colours in as you as you're going along. So I'll see if I can get see if I can get some of this uh, colour here and uh, some interesting uh, detail working. But even though it's still only. Look how loose I'm painting. I'm not uh, being overly delicate about things. I'm just loosely putting bits in and tying it together. And uh, come on here. Put putting bits of random colour into certain areas. Can and building the uh, the bridge up or bits of detail. You don't necessarily have to put the uh, entire detail of the bridge in either. All you need to do is uh, put the essence of the bridge in. Let people's minds make the picture up. That's, uh, th that's the essence of a, a slightly abstract painting. Uh, a little bit of the puzzle has to be made by the person's mind. So, which is a good thing because it, it, it makes them interact with the painting uh, in a, a, a more interesting way than just being told what the painting is. So bring whatever colours you do up here, you need to try and incorporate into as best you can into the uh, watery area so getting back into the uh, making um, adding tonal values and again uh, just remember try and variate the tonal values that you're putting in don't just put one set of tonal values in when I mean tonal values I don't just mean grey I mean, putting a colour in that's going to help represent that changing value of tone. And it's a mixture of grey tones and uh, other things like that that will help you build a believable piece of artwork. And one thing I have forgot here is a, some kind of boat not exactly what it is but we'll get it in before we forget so it's going to be darker at this end than it is at that although this 
part of the painting is also going to be slightly dark so you might not actually see that end of the and parts of this will also merge into the darkness of that And that's where you get your, your blends from. So, just before we uh, let it have a bit of time to uh, dry off a bit, uh, I'll just do this bit here and get some more tonal value work here. And uh, odd bits here, that's it. Yeah, it's starting to progress forward nicely now. We're, we're getting there. Uh, to a good position so I'll let this dry for a short while and we'll move ahead with it and finalize some of the tonal values I want to uh, soften a few bits up round there and maybe round there and then we'll continue on with what we were doing so again it's it's a matter of just getting a little bit of water and teasing the colour a bit. And if you feel like you've got a little bit too much water there. Now with good quality paper you can do this quite a bit. Some papers don't let you uh, do an awful lot of that kind of stuff. And it's it's just giving yourself some lost and found edges. Uh, softening off certain things. Although the painting hasn't got uh, the, the reference image. I'm going to... Give a kind of a, a feel that there's something there that represents uh, the bridge. But now I've done that, it just don't look right. So I'm going to take bits of it out so you can hardly see it. But it does look a little bit weird that the you you can't actually see the bridge part. But in the in the uh, photo image you can't see it. But we'll move on. Let's get a, see if we can uh, tease that out a little bit. it's a lot better it's little bits like that that help with the realism now we're not going for absolute realism but there are certain areas that do benefit from a little bit of finesse so if I can get a, a mucky horrible colour together shouldn't be that uh, that hard there you go so 
it and there. Things going off there. The, uh, there's a side of the boat that's more dark than light there. And as we're getting darker and stronger in as uh, application of paint, we're doing less and less area. Do a bit here, although this should be fairly light. This area. Right, this bit of the bridge here, uh, at, at the left side, I want to make sure that that's definitely a lot darker, as it would be because light's coming from that way. Again, I'm not doing recognisable details, but I'm I'm giving the impression that there's definitely some kind of building there. So. Before I forget, there's a boat, but it's um, really it's uh, it's not. I mean, if I just do that, that's as much as I want to do on it. And there's another one there because you don't want to be over egging uh, the detail on it. So that area there would be darker as well. And just plotting out now um, bits of areas that I think are important. That's definitely an area that needs to be dark. And we'll go as dark as we possibly can. And finish this area off. Always remembering that this area here is probably the, the most in the dark area because of the sun coming this way this is going to be incredibly silhouetted although I'm not going to make it absolutely silhouetted and as a, as a demo piece of work I'm, I'm not that I don't think I'm that far off to get some verticals although it won't be vertical I'm I'm not that far off completion with with this painting I don't think. So I just need to put the um the dreaded rudder uh, not the rudder the mast in there. 
so there's also this to do as well. Go to the top here. I'm gonna make a pig's ear of this, probably will do. There we go. And uh, a few more dark areas, and I will call that done. And it doesn't necessarily have to be dark colour, uh, black or anything like that. It can be the application of a thick, strong, um, cool colour. That will help that. See, I'm I'm applying blue there, and it just helps with that potential darkness. No more. One last bit, just make that dark there. Right? And that I think is me done. I think. And that's a problem. Because sometimes you just don't know when to stop so that's it it's it's done what i'll do is i'll take a, a photo of it uh, so you can see the um final real picture because video doesn't always show you um all the subtleties that exist within paintings so i, I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this and the earlier video which was a live video go back and start from the beginning and have a look at that and then follow on after this if you've come in later on and thank you for your time if you if you could uh, like the video uh, that'd be great if you're not uh, normally a person who comes and watches my video and you'd like to continue please subscribe and click the notification bell which is important also so that you will be notified when I do another video so thank you for your time all have a nice day and a nice week or whatever time you're having and uh, we'll see you later on in another painting bye